look at the conditions. <laughs> I love it. Coniston's Magnificent Seven. Up a mountain, clag, wind, down. Up a mountain, clag, wind, down. You clag! <sighs> so I'm giving it all that, oh, I want to do every way I'm right and all this. It's going to take me twice as long if I keep going wrong bloody way every time. What else are you going to do on a f***ing Mandy? Yes, people, hope you're all good. Welcome back to another video. So in this week's episode, we're going to be hiking Coniston's Magnificent Seven. A 13 mile circular route taking in seven worm rights. And of course, I'm gonna be doing a wild camp. Now, typically you do this route clockwise. I'm gonna do it anti-clockwise so that when I get to the climax, I can finish on the old man of Coniston. So the first one for me is Weatherlam. I've never been to this area, so I'm really excited to be here. Not the greatest weather, if I'm honest. A little bit of wind, a bit of cloud, and the tops look pretty covered in clag, but we'll see when we get there. It's due to clear up a bit later on. Now I got pretty lucky when it come to parking, managed to bag a nice free spot in the Coniston village, about a mile or so away from here. So I popped into the co-op, got a bit of brekkie, grabbed a little pasty for dinner, and now here we are. Now I'm gonna do pretty well on this trip if I come away without any ticks. Some of these tracks are looking a bit gnarly, especially when I'm in my short shorts. So just under two mile in, it's just over three mile, I think, to Weatherlam. The first worm right of the day. Now at the time of recording, it's the Monday after that bloody heat wave we've had all week. And although it's pretty cloudy today, it's still very warm, very muggy, about 18, 19 degrees. So I've actually got quite a long week planned. I've got the week off work, so a nice 13 mile circular is a good way to start the week. And I am staying in the Lake District this week, or at least for about four days or so. I'll see. The Volvo's packed full of kit and gear. So fingers crossed we can get some epic wild camps done. And obviously I'll bring you guys along with me. I think every area that I'm visiting this week, I've never been to before. So it's exciting stuff for me. Nice to explore. Cause there's so many areas in the Lake District and it's going to take me years before I've explored them all. Obviously, you're never going to explore everywhere, but I'm talking worm rights, which the plan is to bag them all eventually. I'm not in no rush, but it'd be a good achievement once I've done it. So that's twice I've done this now. Don't know if you can see that, but I've gone well off course again. Chatting away to the camera. It's because the path looks so good. So you just carry on following it. Jeez. So I reckon we can cut across there and get up back onto the path. We're only like less than half a mile off. <laughs> Adding to the miles. So I'm giving it all that, oh, I want to do every way I'm right and all this. It's going to take me twice as long if I keep going wrong bloody way every time. I only noticed because I started going back down again and I thought, hey, up. according to my GPX file, it's up, 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 up and up till you get to Weatherland. Good job 
is warm. I should just start the hike with a jacket on because every time I do a long well what's supposed to be a nice long day's hiking the rain starts it just came in then pretty heavy so I had to quickly deploy the waterproof see look at that little tarn there if this were last week, I'd have been in that 30 degrees, chilling out. I feel like I picked the wrong week to have off work. But obviously, I didn't know I booked this about two months ago. At least it's quieter though. Because I bet Lake District were bloody busy last week, eh? Another one there, look. Nice little island in the middle. and we're going up there. What have you done to weather, lamb? Trail mix that I made up. So we just dropped off at side of Weatherlam good to go out of that wind for a little bit because it's literally 20 miles per hour plus up on tops and I'm not even talking gusts I'm just saying 20 miles per hour continuously but as soon as you drop down a little bit it obviously eases off so I just got to follow the path now up onto Swirl Horse a horse which whoa which isn't a whim right but then that leads up to swirl how which will be the second whim right of the day two of seven i think the next two are pretty close to each other might be swirl how did i just say swirl how i don't know swirl how and then i think great cars or something god knows i should have learned these but you know I'm going to put it up on screen for you anyway. So there's actually a little summit to the left of me as well called Black Sails. I don't think Wainwright could be asked going up that one. So I didn't bother giving that one its own specific Wainwright. It's on my map those Black Sails. So it's obviously a summit of some sort. So I think we're going just up there. The weather can't make its mind up. Obviously, as we enter the clouds, the rain starts coming in. As we enter the summits, the wind starts coming in. And then every now and then, the sun just makes an appearance. So 
So you just got to traverse now around the side of this mountain, side of Swirl How or Swirl Horse, and then up onto Swirl How. Who thought of these names, eh? How and Horse and Swirls and all this. You won't want to go rolling down there, let me tell you. Take a while before someone found you. Imagine sledging down that beast. No, thank you. Not seeing anyone else since I've been out. I bet everyone were out last week, weren't they? Enjoying heat wave. Now they're either all at work or tucked up at home watching Holmes Under Hammer with Dion Dublin. I know where I'd rather be, up the fells, enjoying the great outdoors. I think I can see Swirl How. Looks a bloody long way away. Uh, you can see the clouds just wisping through and then every now and then it'll just reveal the summit where we're going. So we just got down to Swirl Horse, a bit like S Course, it seems to be like a little junction crossroads sort of vibe. Down in the distance there is Levers Water, is it? Levers Water? I don't know. All I know is we're going up and plenty of up, up to this next one. Stunning though. Beautiful. Oh, this looks like it could be a bit of a gnarly climb at points. Further up there into Clag. So far so good though with the footpath. You can sort of make it out with tiny little stones and bits of scree. Just follow it round. So the path I'm on at the moment it's called the Prison Band, according to my map. You can see the summit now, it's cleared up a bit. Yeah, Prison Band. Not sure why, I'm sure there's a reason. This fella's got the right idea. Chilling there on that little grass shelf. Enjoying the stunning views. Having a scran as well. Buddy, you're all right. You're all right, pal, with me. I'm not gonna make you into a roving Josh.
the right can that. Well, there we are then. The summit of Swirl Hal. Standing at a whopping 2,631 feet tall. And we're all clagged in. So that's number two of seven done. Now I do believe this next one, Great Cars, is not actually too far away from this one compared to the other one. So, making steady progress, plenty of time, and I didn't set off till nine from the co-op in Coniston. So I think I'm gonna go to this next one and then have a 10 minute break, chill out for a bit, load up on trail mix, and then bash on. So I'll bring you back when we get up to the next one. And here we are at the summit of Great Cars, 2,585 feet tall. Let's touch this trig point. Not a trig point, sorry. I'm losing my marbles. Let's touch this cairn. And wow, the views from up here are insane. Stunning. Now it's cleared up a little bit. Oh, I feel a bit exposed to it on here. It's a long way down there. I'm just going to drop off this cairn. So you can see right the way we've come. You can see the summit of Weatherlam right at the top there. You can see the meandering path going all the way down towards what I said was that crossroads at Swirl Hawes. And then you can see the craggy mountain of Swirl Howe. Decent. And then here we are on great cars, great cars. And we're back in the clag. That was just clear a minute ago, when I were on the way up to this one. But it doesn't take long. That's why it's important you know where you're going on these trips. Well, not know where you're going, but that you've got some form of navigation. You can't rely on just being able to see the paths and stuff, because within a minute, the whole path has just been swallowed by Clegg. You Clegg! Well, I better put my hood up, otherwise my hat's going to be off the outside of this. And I've got a fancy chasing it for the rest of the night. Just off the summit of Great Cars, I just found this crash site where eight people lost their lives and it was actually during World War II. They were doing a nighttime navigation exercise and the whole mountain was just covered in clag and the pilot lost his bearings and unfortunately crashed into the side of this mountain when he tried to land. So, as you can see, there's quite a few bits of the plane, the wreckage still remaining. There's a nice cross on top as well, into this cairn, as well as a memorial plaque with the names of those who lost their lives. So I thought I'd just have my break here, just chill out for a little bit before we head on up to Great Friar or something, what's it called? Let's have a look. Grey Friar, the next one, Friar Tuck. So chill out here, give it 10 minutes and then we'll get moving. So that one up there was the third of seven Wainwrights of today, of the Magnificent Seven, Coniston's Magnificent Seven. And then Grey Friar will be the fourth. So we're getting there, we're getting there. I'm gonna take my bag off actually and just chill out for a bit take some of this weight off my back, pay my respect to these guys. So in 1944, we're a Halifax bomber.
Next step, grey fryer tuck. And I can see the path doesn't look to be too difficult. It looks like a long walk. And then I'm pretty sure you've got to come all the way back with this one. Straight up, all the way back this way before you can continue. Beautiful. Proper vus again, eh? We're heading up there. That's the highest cairn. Grey Friar. Fryer. Grey mountain. Grey views. So that's Grey Fryer standing at 2530 feet. And it's the fourth Wainwright of the day. Happy days. Right, I'm not gonna hang about up this one. There's no views at all. It's pure clag. So now I've got to head back the way I came slightly and then bear right onto the next one. And now it's quite a bit of a walk now to this next one. So I'm going to have trekking poles out. Well, I have had them out anyway, but I'm going to be making use of the trekking poles properly and just powering on and getting this next one boxed off. Yes. Loving it though. Great day out so far. Looking forward to having a nice wild camp tonight. I ain't got a clue where I'm going to pitch. I'm aiming for Old Man at Coniston. I'm not sure what the summit's like. I made sure on this one not to watch any videos of people doing this round. I know sometimes it'd help to be able to see it, videos of someone else doing it for navigational purposes. But sometimes I just like the surprise of the summits. Do you know what I'm saying? So I didn't want to spoil it by watching some videos. So I haven't actually got a clue what the top of Old Man Coniston is like. I have seen videos in the past, I'm sure I have. I'll have seen a Solo Summer Tier video, and maybe a Bushman and Blue video of him up there, but I just can't remember, to be honest. So I know not far from it, according to the map, there's a little tarn. It's not directly on the summit, might be just slightly off. So I might have to just pitch up near there. I'll see how busy it is when I get there, because I know Old Man Coniston could be quite a busy one. It's quite popular and I need to check which way I'm going because I've just started walking in the clag seeing a path but it doesn't look like the path I just came up anyway right I better check my map and I'll get back to you so there, if you look at my map you can see the various footpaths so you've got that one that one that one is the way I came and then that one and then if you look up you can just see them so that's the one we're going to be going down, which matches that one there. And then you've got the one that we came up. And that's how I navigate, my friends. So this is probably the longest section of the walk without actually bagging a win, right? I think it's about three and a half miles between Grey Friar and this next one, this next one I don't know the name of until I look at my map. I don't know if you can quite see the views are opening up a little bit. That down there is Seafweight Tarn, but nothing to do with the Seafweight. Oh, hey up. I can hear it, but I can't see it. Anyway, what I'm saying. Oh yeah, Seafweight Tarn down there but nothing to do with the Seafweight where I, I like to park up when I'm going to 
Scaffold Pike and all around them areas. I don't think we're anywhere near that. No, we're not. So not to do with that, but anyway, it's Seathwaite Town. So we're just traversing around the side of this mountain for about three and a half miles and then head on up to the next Wayne right. So will that be number five? I think it will. Five of seven will be the next one. Need to stop off for a little dinner break at some point. It's kicking on two o'clock now. But I did have quite a long break earlier by that memorial. Must have been sat there for half an hour or something. And now I know I'm on track, definitely time-wise, judging by the amount of miles I've done and the amount of miles I've got left. Yeah, I can take it steady and just sort of enjoy these views. <laughs> these epic views. Come on. It's nice to breathe in a bit of mountain air though, isn't it? Feeling good. Feeling very good. What else are you gonna do on a fing Monday? I keep hearing these jets flying about. You can hear the bass in the distance. Can't see any though. Be nice if it would just fly down there towards Seafoot Town so I could see it. But nope. Right, there's some big old boys coming up now, big mountains. So I'm gonna have to check map in a minute and make sure I don't go the wrong way. I ain't got time for that. I think what's hard about this, mentally, is you're sweating your bollocks off just to get up this. Literally, as soon as I get to the top, I'll be coming back down the same bit again. It's not like when you're wild camping on the summit of a mountain and you then spend the evening there and you don't come back down until the following day. With this, it's just like up a mountain, down, up a mountain, down, repeat. Up a mountain, clag, wind, down, up a mountain, clag, wind, down, repeat. You don't want to fall down there. You don't want to fall down anywhere, do you really? What a stupid saying. Nearly at the summit. I think this is the cairn up here. Unless it's a false summit. Which won't surprise me. And yeah. It was a false summit. Well, if you can see the outline up there, but over in distance is the real summit. Whoa, that is into the abyss, into nowhere. Need to get up there somehow. Staying away from that edge though. Wow. Yeah. Not a big fan of that. But anyway, this is the highest point. So it must be the summit. I'm just gonna double check on my map. Make sure, uh, let's not get all the way up here. No, I've not even got to the summit. Right then, here we are. Just at the summit of Dow Crag. Standing tall at 2,553 feet. Number five of seven. Making good progress now. Once again, full of clag up here. Can't see a thing. Pretty windy as well. And that rain started coming in pretty heavy. Not heavy, but pretty frequent. So, no point hanging about up here. We're gonna have a break, but there's no sheltered spots at all, really. So, I'm just gonna keep moving. Keep on moving.
So I've come back past the crossroads a bit earlier, just down from Dal Crag. I've now got to go up here, more or less towards the summit of Old Manor Coniston, but not quite. Then come back on myself to do Brim Fell, is it? Brim Fell. And that'll be six of seven. And then I can finish with the final summit of the day, the Old Man of Coniston. And that will be Coniston's Magnificent Seven completed. So that is Brimfell, standing at 2,612 feet tall. Number six of seven. Yeah, been pretty hard work this, that wind. As soon as I got up onto the top of where Old Man of Constant is, and I had to head back towards Brimfell, the wind has just been relentless. So it's gonna be exactly the same at the Coniston summit. Neat windscreen wipers again. Glasses are all steamed up, man. Oh. Wow. So, only one more to do. I hope you can hear me all right with this wind. One more to do. The old man of Coniston. And then I'm going to find somewhere to pitch. I'm going to drop down to this little town, I think, called Low Water. It's only a little bit down from the summit. Like a quarter of a mile or something, if that. But hopefully it'll get me out of this wind because I'm not going to have a decent night's sleep up here with this wind. And I'm not about that wind chasing today. Maybe on tomorrow's pitch when I'm in a different um, hint, hint. So a last little push now onto Old Man of Coniston Summit. I'll bring you back when I get there. There we have it, the final worm right in Coniston's Magnificent Seven. The old man of Coniston standing at 2,635 feet. Decent. And look at these views there. Eh? Looks like last one I went up actually. Similar sort of view. And now I've got a bit of a predicament because it's really early. It's like quarter to four. I'm gonna get dark for another, what, four hours or something. So, not sure what to do now. I'm gonna meander on down to that tarn that we're on about. I could even just pitch up early, chill out for a few hours. If it clears up, I'll come back up to the trig point and have a look at these views. I don't know. I'm gonna go check it out anyway. See what options we've got for pitching. Probably could pitch up here, but like I say, with this wind and with these views, what's the point? No point having a sleepless night because of the wind when I ain't got the views to make it worth it. So let's go check this little body of water out and we'll take it from there. Nick saying I'll nip back up to the summit later on. No chance, not with these steps. What a slog, eh? What a mission. I'm worse on downhills with my knee. Feeling good though, so far. I think I've just seen that little bit of water down there. So it's not that far down off at summit really. Still a couple mile tomorrow to go to get back to Whip. Like I say, I'm in lakes for, I'm gonna say four days this week. So I'll be getting back to the whip tomorrow and driving to the next location. You can see the path zigzagging down towards that little body of water there. That's where I'm heading.
Yeah, hit a slight little problem. We're in a right little wind ball here. Ah. Nearly fell it. Getting some big gusts coming through. So, got to assess the situation. See, like now it's calm, and all of a sudden, woof, big gust of come flying through the starboard thing. So, either way, I need to get some water. So, I'm going to be checking out this little tarn down there. I'll see what the wind's like once I get right down at the bottom. But you can see when there's a gust coming, you can see the waves in the tarn. Judging by the direction, we need to be at this side of the hill. Obviously, I'll check the mountain forecast for the wind direction as well once I get down here. See what we can do. We always find some. Yeah, scrap that tarn. There's plenty of water sources around here, probably trickling down from that tarn. And as soon as I turned that corner after the tarn, the wind seems to have dropped. There's the odd little gust coming through. Like it's one coming now. Nowhere near what it was up there. So that'll do me. It's just started raining. So I think this looks like a good spot to fill my water. A good little tip as well. If you fill in your water, the last water source before camp, just down every bit of liquids that you've got first. Even if you're not thirsty then you're just hydrating yourself fully and then you can fill up makes sense doesn't it there you go them gusts are back might be a while like oh taped it up at home and it's failed I thought it was good enough because you know what I did I bought a replacement didn't even check the size teeny look at that but they're all weak Great, that's water sorted. One and a half litres. Oh, you can feel it on back as well. <laughs> Extra bit of weight. Now it's just about finding somewhere to pitch. And pretty quick as well, actually, because I'm getting pretty wet through. Obviously, I've got my waterproof on over the top, but I've got no on my legs. Just my shorts. And my trainers are not waterproof. So it'll be nice to get my tent up and get dry. I'm happy that I found a good sort of area to pitch in regards to the wind. Brucey bonus again if we can get a signal, especially with it being pretty early on. And I'm sitting there twiddling my thumbs all night, just smashing that Netflix on. It's now just a case of follow the path and just keep scoping little areas out away from the path. Go check them out. If I can't find anywhere, come back to the path. <whistles> Careful with fence, lad. Jesus. Didn't expect to see that there. So no, we're not pitching here, clearly. Wow. I thought it was just gonna be all grass. So these are all the Coniston quarries. I knew there was some shit going down around here. They're pretty cool to pitch around here there's all these little sort of buildings obviously old very old buildings not much left of these buildings so there might be some areas to explore and have a look obviously inside these buildings you can't really pitch up because 
it's just full of slate or whatever it is on ground and it's not a freestanding tent i'm afraid it's a trekking pole tent so i need a good pitch in grass keep trying though seems like it's probably good that i'm ready to pitch up nice and early because if i'd have got here really late then i might have been struggling there we go 1740 to 1950 these outbuildings were used well outbuildings are probably in buildings aren't they you know what i'm saying won't find me going down there pal not on my own anyway see so just a bit more grass here good pitch here be epic Historic buildings, please do not climb or remove stonework. Makes sense, mate. 1740, these have been about since. Yeah, this place, this whole place is actually pretty mental. That waterfall. Beast. So this side looks completely no go. Proper cats later. I reckon. Head that side, it looks a lot more grassy. And check it out. I'd have loved to have pitched there, man. If I'd have had a freestanding tent, I would. But it's just Yeah, it's just rocking ground everywhere. About two mil of grass. First sign of wind, my tent's going down. Just keep going. Keep exploring. Could even head up there. This place is ace. Get guy lines on them. There's that Hilleberg Super Black label. That Super Black. Oh, I wonder if there's a bit of grass over there for a pitch. Probably best off heading this way. Office. Sixteen ninety to nineteen sixty. I like that. Okay, that's an old bit of kit. I don't know what it is, but it's an old bit of kit. I've only just realised the actual size of this pile of slate. It is massive. Wow. Yeah, this place is nuts. I do need to start finding somewhere to pitch though. I can't start wandering about here all day. Because before I know it, time will be ticking. But yeah, they were awesome to check out. I'm glad I didn't pitch up there because if I'd have come here in the morning, I probably couldn't be asked having a wonder. Think how many years and how much time has gone into just building these walls all the way down. It feels like we're in Wales. Get guy line on that, mate. Thicker than end at trekking pole. Right, we're getting down to some nice grassy areas now. Fingers crossed for a pitch.
big pile of slate that in it. Not being funny, right? But that is the single biggest pile of shit poo, shit poo, sheep poo I have ever seen in my life. Do you know what? I think I found a decent spot there. Cracking view uh, Coniston water. It's nice and flat and not boggy. A lot of this area here seems to be pretty boggy. So I have a boggy covered in shit or not flat or got slate underneath it or rock or whatever this is at this side. So I think just might have got one there and not visible from the path, which wasn't essential, but certainly a benefit. So I'm gonna whack this tent up nice and quick and I'll bring you back when it's up. There we have it, Lanshan 2, pitched up. Decent pitch to be fair. Always looks well. If you pitch these right, they should look perfect. Nice and taut without actually over tightening the straps. There's still plenty left on them. You don't want it to be too tight. Well, that looks pretty class to me. Trekking poles set at 125. Don't forget, if you've got a trekking pole with two adjusters, set them both to 125. I'm not ever gonna put these side guy lines out in a well sheltered spot here. Really happy with that, actually. It's a lot different of a spot than I expected, but we've got the craggy fells. We've got, well, we've got clag up there. We've got some high mountains in the distance. Nice crag there. If I step up the ear, I can see the path for tomorrow, meandering down. But then once you get down to tent level, you can't see the path at all. So that's perfect. Right, starting to spit again. So I'm gonna get on my gear, get it set up in tent, and then just chill out for a bit. So I'm probably gonna have an hour to my sen. Well, I've got every day, all day, every day to my sen, Anna. But I mean, just an hour, not recording or all, just set my stuff up, relax, maybe get a coffee on. Shit, yeah, I've got a new stove to try. I'm not ditching the Soto Windmast, obviously that is the best stove of all time. But we're going with some different fuel, a different type of stove. Yeah, I'm scared actually. Might end up making a brew outside the tent, we'll see. Anyway, I'm gonna get my stuff in. Get set up for night. Got in just in time, really. That rain started. Right then, all set up in the tent now. Got my sleeping bag out, my mat's blown up. This is my new little cook setup. Tiny little setup here. Nice and lightweight. And for the first time ever, I'm actually going to be using an alcohol stove. So I've not really got the complete setup yet. This is my little windshield slash pot holder. So put them together like that there's actually free but I can't use free yet so that goes in there like that then technically you put your pot on top if I had my big um, I think it's 1.1 litre titanium cup that I usually use it sits on top nicely but this one to go a bit more lightweight it's just enough to make boiling bag meals and coffees. Obviously it can't sit on top because it's too small. So I've ordered this little metal tripod thing that I made, they made for alcohol stores, but it just didn't come in time. So you put your alcohol stove in the middle and then this would then sit on that little stand. So to overcome that, I've realized I can actually just fold it together with two. So you put two, fold it together. That goes around it. And that can sit on top. 
ish. I've also got my little mat here to set it up. Heat proof mat, it's just a welding mat or something like that. So good for however many degrees, a lot of degrees. So that just sits on there, boiling away. Happy days. So I think that'll work. So I've got my fuel in this little bottle. There's my stove. Need to find my lighter. I hope I brought it. Otherwise I'm having a cold meal tonight. I've already filled it up a bit. I ain't actually got a clue how efficient they are and how much fuel I need to be able to boil a brew. So this is going to be a good test for it. So that goes in the middle. Drop that down there. Hopefully we're alright like this. We should be. We're getting a few splashes. We should be alright. Seems stable. Whoa. It seems stable enough. And once I put some water in it, it's going to be even more stable. Yeah, that wouldn't go nowhere, that. Not at all. So let's see how we get on with this. Is that wet? I can't tell. Yeah, it's lit. So I'll put that over it. And there you go. Put that on top. Obviously it's going to be more sturdy once I've got the third shield on with the pot stand in the middle. My sole purpose for getting this was so in winter I've got a good backup so I can bring two stoves, I can bring my normal gas Soto Windmaster stove and then I can bring my alcohol stove as a backup. Yeah, them flames are kicking off up the side. Definitely needs that third windshield on. And the best thing about these stoves, there's no noise and there's nothing to go wrong really, as in the functionality of it. As long as you've got a lighter, you should be able to light it. And they actually perform better in colder temperatures. Sometimes you can have gas that's a bit temperamental when it's freezing, unless you get some proper dedicated gas that's good down to minus temperatures. But with this, you can't really go wrong. That handle's gonna get pretty hot because the flames are flying up the side. But I don't think I'll be using these inside the tent. <laughs> no chance. It's a bit uncontrollable, isn't it? A flammable liquid. Yep, definitely boiled. Sorted. Just need to make sure that's not too hot. No, it's fine. So if all I'm boiled too much, and now it's just in case of putting this out. <coughs> it's out. <coughs> Must be. If it's not, that'll put it out. So more than enough to make a big brew. I think it's about 450 mil or something. All right. Cheers. Proper budget life at the moment. A king pot noodle, beef and tomato. I'm enjoying the silent stove though. I really like that. <sighs> well. Morning people, don't know what the hell happened last night, I fell straight asleep, I put some on to watch, had my pot noodle, out like a light, glasses on everything, I left all the doors open, woke up at middle of the night, with rain flying down, pretty nippy, <sighs> anyway, I've got up, an hour and a half later than I expected to. Didn't even set my alarm. So it's quarter to seven now. So I'm gonna get up, 
and pack down this tent and head down the rest of this track back to the whip not sure what the weather's like out there the rain stopped so that's good looking a bit claggy i think so i'm gonna pack all my stuff up and get moving i think I'm not gonna hang about this morning Right guys, all packed up, leave no trace as always. So we've just got to go over this little hill here, try find the path and then follow it back down towards Coniston village. Legs are feeling good today so far. Feet are feeling fine, no blisters. According to my health app last night, I did about 16.6 .6 miles. So that's steady away. Might not seem a lot, but like I said, I did seven worm rights. Plenty of elevation. Back to the path already. Didn't take long. All the sheep are out this morning, having the brekkie. I've just had a little brunch bar for breakfast. So as you can see, back on the trail. Yeah, weather's not looking too bad. A bit gloomy, but at least it's clear. And that clag has gone. Tell you one thing I'm guilty of, and I always seem to do it, is the following morning after a camp, I put too many layers on. There's no way I should have put this polyester layer on. Because I'm sweating now. Just when you first get out of your tent on a morning, you think it's gonna be a cold day or whatever. But that's just because you're not active. Really, I should have just hiked down in my t-shirt and I'd have soon warmed up. But anyway. Right guys, so we're more or less at the end of the trail now. Not far from Coniston Village where I've parked the car. So it's probably a good time to wrap up this video. You've been watching me do Coniston's Magnificent 7. And they certainly were magnificent. Not as magnificent as the weather. I hope you've liked this one. I'll probably be back here at some point. Because this is a pretty cool area. And there's a lot of places to explore. Maybe even a winter camp. I reckon you'd better do a rate pitch up on Coniston in winter and the path isn't too sketchy to get up there either. So, thank you for watching. If you've done this route before or if you've been camping up Coniston or even just hiked up Coniston, let me know in the comments as always. Right, don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. In a bit.